Look at somebody and say, I am unstoppable. Whatever you thought you lost, whatever is taken from you, God will compensate you. All things work together for good to those who are called according to his what? Purpose. All things. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. I'm dealing with five enemies you must deal with. Five strong men Five strongholds that you must deal with and overcome. Five enemies you must eliminate. Five enemies you must eliminate. Turn your Bible with me to Zechariah chapter number 1, 18 to 21. Then lifted I up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. And I said unto angel, the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What come these to do? And he spoke saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fret them to cast out the horns of the Gentiles which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. He showed me four horns. I've added one horn. These horns have assignment to scatter Judah. Judah is the fourth son of Jacob. And the meaning of Judah is praise. When praise is scattered, testimony is lost. So there is assignment by these strongholds. I am not going into the theology of this representative of these horns. In the Bible days, they represent four nations. But that's not where I'm going. He said, these horns have second assignment to make sure nobody rises in Judah. To destroy Israel, the fourth, the twelve tribes. And render you Jerusalem the city of power useless. The assignment of these homes. But I'm going to get down to explain how this relates to you as an individual. I 
I am taking the first the first and I'm going to explain the characteristics when it comes to spiritual warfare anyone that wants to engage in spiritual warfare must understand these forces I will be dealing with The church seemed to hear the word spiritual warfare, but the multitude of people in the church do not understand what spiritual warfare means. That it is war in the spirit. And for you to fight in the spirit, you must acknowledge that you are a spirit. For the spirit realm, it's not a place the novice gets to and return the same. If you do not know who you are, you cannot go into the realm of the spirit and fight and return the same. You will be wounded and sometimes dislocated. If care is not taken, you may lose your life. Because you've got to understand what you're dealing with. Spiritual warfare is not speaking in tongues. You got to understand the rule of engagement in the realm of the spirit to fight in the realm of the spirit. Unfortunately, many people don't even know what spiritual warfare is. It is war in the spirit. And there is no physical weapon that is used in this war. The complexity of this war is that you don't even see who you are dealing with. Only your spirit sees. And that's why you got to engage the Holy Ghost. And that's what I've been trying to explain to you in the last two Sundays. That the reason why the Holy Ghost was sent to planet Earth is to help you to penetrate the realm of the spirit and dislodge the forces. Somebody say, I hear Every hidden destiny helper be made visible in the name of Jesus. I've come to announce to somebody that the season of celebration has just started. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. This week, this week, a week of testimony unlimited testimony somebody shout and receive it Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3 he said do we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh in Ephesians 6 he says we wrestle not we fight not against flesh and blood. Our war is not with human beings. With principalities and powers. With the rulers of this wicked war. And spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. There is a horn. In every family, there is a horn in every life. And the horn aims at one thing, that you will not fulfill destiny. Somebody say, I reject. The horn targets that you will not fulfill destiny. That nobody will raise up. The horn targets that there will be no praise coming out of you. In the year of supernatural blessings, you will sing praises. You will rise in that family. You will rise in that business. You will rise in that profession. You will rise in that career. 
if no one has risen before, you will be the one to rise. I want to deal with this first horn. I call this first horn the spirit of Amalek. The spirit of Amalek. Turn your Bible with me to Exodus chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him. And fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hor went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hor stirred up his hand, the one on the other side, on one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial. In a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord had sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to what? generation. Deuteronomy chapter number 25. Reading from verse 17. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when you were come forth out of Egypt. How he met thee by the way and smote the hinter part of thee, even all that were feeble. Please take note. I want you to take note of this verse. How he met thee by the way and smote the hindermost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee. When thou was faint and weary, and he feared not who? God. He feared not God. Mm. He feared not God. I know you have been reading these scriptures. Let me begin by saying this. The Name Amalek. Amalek is a grandson in the Bible of Esau, the son of who? Uh oh. Are you here? Esau is the son of who? Isaac. Is it some say Jacob? Is the grandson Amalek? If you look into the scriptures in Genesis chapter chapter thirty six, 
15 and 16, you will get what I'm trying to say here.